Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. Merrily we roll along. It's finally back on Broadway with a star-studded cast, Daniel Radcliffe, Jonathan Groff, and Lindsay Mendez. And of course, the songs of Stephen Sondheim. Here's Beth Stevens with another edition of Building Broadway. Thanks, Tamsin. Maria Friedman is British theater royalty, both as a performer and as a director. Now she's bringing her starry revival of George Firth and Stephen Sondheim's Merrily We Roll Along to Broadway. I chatted with her in the rehearsal room. Merrily We Roll Along, when it first came around in 1981 on Broadway, it was a bit of a heartbreak. It had a very short life. Mm -hmm. So what does it feel for you to be bringing it back to Broadway for the very first time? I feel very honored because my dear friend Steve Sondheim, who I miss every minute in these rehearsal rooms, he feels very present at the moment with us. Um, he gave our production his seal of approval and wanted it to come here. And I was working with him um, on it uh, before he, he left us so suddenly. So I feel, I feel both massive elation that I kind of know we've got this wonderful thing to share with everybody and also a bit heartbroken that he's not there to share it. It's the most autobiographical piece that he identified with, the, the making of music, the sharing of music, that journey of offering. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, 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 I am excited, I think you can tell. So you've been working on this piece for a long time. Yep. What was your approach when you first started out? This incredible piece, um, as you know, goes backwards. We meet these people at the height of their success, having made, maybe made a few kind of difficult choices in their life. And we watch them quite alone and lost at the start of the play. And we track back and watch and discover with them where they might have made alternative choices. And we watch how that all track all the way back until they were their young people on the edge of a rooftop with the whole world in front of them. And they, everything is possible. And so it changes, it morphs according to what age you're watching it from. So young people will have a different feeling to somebody of my age or somebody of your age. And, um, so it keeps, it keeps growing, there's, some, there's something in it for everybody and the score is off the scale brilliant. It's, it's joyous and brilliant. I can't tell you how, I'm, anyway, as you can tell, I'm still a fan. Well, the key to Merrily We Roll Along is these three friends. So tell me about assembling this cast. It must have been about chemistry. It's absolutely about chemistry and it took a good six months of casting for me to really kind of feel the right people. Stephen Sondheim is always the cleverest person in the room. He's just, you can't, you can't, and what he does is he supplies you with that, that cleverness. But then the genius of that man is that he leaves a gap for your heart. There's a gap for a shape of a Lindsay Mendez or a Jonathan Groff or a Daniel Radcliffe. And when you put them together, they fill that space that he's left. He's not He's not autocratic in his writing. He doesn't decide what it's got to be. He, he gives you a, a flavor of the, who these people are. And then the actor is allowed just to stretch out and offer all their amazing gifts. So it was, it was a difficult program, a process, but the second I met Jonathan and the joy that man brings into the world, let alone on stage, he and Daniel, and his, they're truly good people. And so that kind of conflict that they have to deal with is dealt with big hearts rather than hard hearts or superficial people. They're honest and genuine. And that's pretty hard to, to do when you've had as much success as they've had. You are one of the foremost interpreters of Sondheim's work. Thank you. Tell me what it was like for you to stretch in those roles, as you said, and how that informed you as a director. It, it informs every beat of what I do because I sort of feel like I'm, I'm in them all, the rhythms, and I feel, I feel their pains, I feel their joys um, as, a, as an actor. And then I watch the actor in front of me. I know that we have that kit. We don't come with a typewriter or a 
you know, what cameras or anything. We come with us. And so it's up to me to give, and I'm not just saying this, but a really safe, playful place. Because we always get to a point with all the actors where they go, oh, because it's hard. It's hard to open yourself up to the amount of dexterity and f you have to be so fleet to play these parts. They're not big arcs. We go over decades, so they're jumping around emotionally all over the place. So they have to be very versatile. But I think I, I know the script so well, I feel it. Um, and so we feel it together. And sometimes they go off to, it's great watching an actor go completely down the wrong road and you're like, that was really great, but let's bring you back here. This is the road you're going down. And I want to talk a little bit about your first falling in love with Stephen Sondheim's work. When he came and he directed me in Sunday in the Park with George, and it's like the room fell apart and there was just two people in the world because his, he's so perspicacious, he's so detailed, he's so exacting. And there he was kneeling at my feet uh, as Dot, giving me so many notes, but they were all absolutely brilliant and I just drank them in, I was hungry for them. Anyway, the next evening he came in and he came into my dressing room and he said that he was really ready to be very angry with me because he thought, who is this girl who didn't write any of them down? There were so many of them, but I'd got every single one right and because they were brilliant notes, because as an actor you're hungry to, to, to grow, and then we had this one-to-one, -one, so I was scared of him. Then we had this one-to-one, -one, and it was literally like the world sort of receded, like his amazing finishing the hat story where the rest of the world disappeared and there was just the two of us. And his passion and love for actors was just beautiful. So from being frightened, I became a collaborator with him because he adored, he knew his writing needed someone to do it. What do you cherish most about your friendship and your professional relationship? The laughter. I knew him for, what, 40 years. So um, he had, he, he could, I miss when I'm in something, he would always come and see, or if I'm, if like now, he would do this laugh, everybody knows it, who knows it, we go, ha! And you'd be in, on stage, you go, likes me but he like it was just a single noise um, and I really miss that sound of laughter and if you made him laugh he just he was like his whole face would just crinkle up can I just tell you the bits that people don't know about Stephen Sondheim is that he was the loyalist man and I think you'll find that anyone who really was close to him will say humor and loyalty love of food liked a great meal had a most dazzling memory and he was interested in what was in front of him. He was curious to the last second. So you couldn't just, you couldn't just turn up, you had to show up and offer because he would be interested in what was happening in your life. N um, not out of a duty, but out of a genu gen genuine intellectual curiosity and emotional compassion for people. He was just an incredible man.